Are you working with a Mixrite fertilizer injector or considering buying one? Here's an all-in-one guide to using Mixrite from DEMA Engineering. We invited Dave from DEMA to come down to our shop and tell us everything you need to know about Mixrite fertilizer injectors. Hi, I'm Dave with DEMA Engineering. I'm going to talk to you today about the Mixrite installation of your Mixrite as well as how to adjust and do preventative maintenance. So if you've got a small farm or a small garden and you're irrigating with a timer and cycles, there's no reason that you shouldn't be fertigating. The difference between irrigation and fertigation is you're just inducing or inducting into the water column a nutrient of sources, whatever that nutrient is that you need. It helps save your time and your labor to allow you to do other things on your garden or on your farm. As your mix right is flowing and functioning, and it's inducting your nutrient into the water. The nutrient and the water is mixed mechanically by the action of the piston coming up and swirling the water in the top of the mix right, and then on the downstroke, discharge down line. This will help eliminate any need to have a mixing chamber downstream. If your irrigation room is small and you don't have space, you can save some of that space by not having to add your mixing chamber because it's all being done internally on the mix right. It's compact, it's easy to use, and should you need maintenance, it can all be done in the field. If you're looking to add an injection pump, a mix right, to your system, don't be intimidated by it. The action that you see in the mix right, it's powered by your water line pressure and flow. It doesn't require any electrical sources of any kind as long as you have water pressure and volume. Our mix right units are compatible with any of your plumbing materials that you use. You could be using a polyplastic, you could be using a PVC, you could even be using copper. It, it allows for those people who are growing at a hobby farm level all the way up to the commercial vineyard and orchard operations. When you receive your mix right, this is how it should come and how it should look. So this here is your actual unit. It comes in with your mounting bracket that's already on it. These are extra parts in case you have a larger hose diameter for your uptake of your nutrients. You can exchange it out and put a larger hose size so you can pull up more nutrients depending upon its viscosity. And this would be your uptake tube, which currently will go onto this barbed fitting that comes with it. And you're gonna connect your hose onto it. Depending upon your model size, you're gonna have either an eight foot or a 10 foot hose. The OD and ID dimensions will be bigger depending upon how big of a unit you get. This is a secondary lip seal kit. Our mix right unit that is shipped comes ready to go. It's ready to be used. However, majority of the mix rights are used in the agricultural environment. Once you're in agriculture and the units are running, should you have a problem, we don't want you to have to wait to do any kind of repair. So you get a lip seal kit that is included in the box from the factory on every mix right that's purchased. If you do need extra lip seal kits, you can contact Drip Depot and they have a chart that can tell you the part number. They're specific to each unit. So if you have multiple different units at your site, make sure if you're gonna change out a lip seal kit that you look at the part number and the information with it, that it goes to that specific mix right. There's gonna be four items in here. So the first two larger items are your lip seals. And this is for the piston engine that's in the top portion of the mix right unit. On this unit, there's an upper and lower, and once you break it apart, you'll see the size difference and why. The other important item that comes with it is a lubrication silicone. This lubrication silicone is to be used anytime that you're going to do preventative maintenance on your mix right. Clean up the internals of it and go ahead and reapply an application layer of lubrication silicone. The last item that sometimes gets overlooked, i got to be kind of gentle to get it out of the bag here. This small black O-ring goes on the inside of the mix right, and there's a chemical pickup rod, and that rod has this seal. If this seal should be damaged or becomes hard because of oxidation with the fertilizers or the nutrients that you're using, this will also have to be replaced. The Mixrite series and models come with a number of different options as far as seal material. If you're going to be using a product that you wish to inject to a water line and you're unsure, go ahead and give an email to the guys at Drip Depot and ask the question. They can help direct you to which model is going to be best for the chemical product that you're trying to inject into the water line. A standard Mixrite that you can order from Drip Depot is going to handle the majority of products and nutrients that you're going to want to inject into your water line. If you need to inject a very harsh, acidic, high pH scale product, Dip Depot carries a mix right version that is constructed with seals and plastic of PVDF. The mix right series has different size units to handle all types of applications, anywhere from a home gardener to a 40 acre to 110 acre pivot irrigation system. It's all by size and flow rates. If you know your flow rate per minute, Drip Depot and the customer service team will be happy to help you size the proper mix right. When you're purchasing your mix right, you want to know what your end use is. So how many gallons per minute is going to have to flow through the machine to feed a zone? And a zone is typically one room, one set of tables, whatever that solenoid valve will feed. If you don't know, I'd put a five gallon bucket at the end of that and open it up and let it run for 60 seconds. At that time, you'll measure how much water is in the bucket and you'll know what your gallon per minute flow rate is. The mix rights have series of mix rights. Each of them has the max flow through point. 
And what will happen is, is that this unit, which is a spring fed mechanism that goes up and down, a piston of sorts, it'll go slower when the flow rate is less. And when you're up at the higher rate, it'll go faster. That's why it's a proportional mixer. So every stroke, it's going to inject the same amount of product. It just may take that piston stroke longer because the flow rates. So for those of you who are going to be installing the mix right for the first time, rest assured, it is a relatively easy process. For the installation, typically hand tools is all that you're going to need. Each mix right have caps on the inlet and outlet of your unit. These are there just to keep any kind of debris, cardboard dust, anything else from getting into the unit. So once you're ready to do the install, you can go ahead and remove these caps. The mix right has threaded inputs and discharge lines on both sides. And as long as you have your plumbing run up to it, we recommend that you're gonna go ahead and use a ball valve, a union, and then your connection point. And then just the inverse on the downstream side. That way, in case you have to do any maintenance in the future, you can shut off those ball valves and not get wet. You can remove your mix right and do any kind of maintenance that you might need. The mix right on the back of it has a black plastic frame, which you sometimes need to do if need be is get a standard blade screwdriver to release these. It's just plastic and you can bend it off. That way it frees you from the framework. This unit has an on off knob, which now it's in run function mode. When you push it down and turn it, that is closed. Water will still flow through the mix right and continue downstream to your plants, but it will not induct nutrient into the water line. When it's twisted and down, this is the off position. And as you can hear, it pops up, you hear the spring kind of cling inside there. When it's up, this will then flow. There are arrows. It's on the label and it's also embedded into the plastic. These are something to pay attention to for your water flow. So this would be your inlet water flow and this would be your discharge going downstream. If your plumbing is already preset and the size is say an inch water line and you purchase a mix right that has a three quarter inch inlet and exit, it's okay to neck down those with couplers, reducer bushings for a short amount of distance. The water column is gonna fill back up. Your detraction because of the downsize and pipe size won't affect you that much. So it's not that big of a worry. You don't have to change out your piping. So one of the things while you're installing your hose and your mix right, you wanna make sure that your mix right is above your nutrient tank and into your plumbing lines. When you install the hose, make sure that you have your pickup off the bottom of your tank. The bottom of the tank has a lot of sediment. And if you have sediment and start trying to pull it up, you're gonna clog this filter screen. So if this filter screen gets clogged, it's not gonna be able to pull your nutrients up. One of the other PM programs you're preventing the maintenance, pull it out occasionally, make sure you got a plastic rubber glove on and just kind of clean it off, make sure there's no debris there stopping the flow of induction. After the install of the mix right, now it's time to get it up and running. So you're gonna activate your water. Go ahead and adjust your adjustment sleeve collar up, not to where it's tight and rigid, but just up to the top of the scale will help you get that prime. Once it's there, you can then adjust your sleeve to the application level that you wish. The beauty of the mix right is, is that it's adjustable. You'll see on this mix right unit, for the chemical ratios, there's a percentage so that you can see the values that you're gonna be injecting. Or if you look on the other side of the mix right, there's a ratio scale. Whichever you're more comfortable using, you certainly can. There's a blue sleeve, which you need to twist to make your adjustments. As it comes from the factory, it's gonna be drawn up to the top portion. So if you're gonna need a lower ratio or a lower percentage of volume injected, you'll need to remove these pins. Please note the red label pin does not need to be removed in order to make the adjustment to the sleeve. Twist until you see on the scale where approximately you want it to be. And once it is, there's a smooth portion on the percentage and there's a smooth portion on the ratio. You wanna be sure that this U-pin is gonna slide over the top of those two smooth areas. If you're off just a little bit, this pin will not go in. So if that's the case, you can put your pin as far as it'll go, slowly turn it until you can get it to slide into place. This will be your set range. So as your mix right is injecting the nutrient into the water stream, sending it downstream, you'll wanna check and verify proof that your nutrient levels are where they need to be. If they're a little bit too rich, you can pull your pin and you screw this down to make your induction less. Okay, and if that's where you think you're gonna need it, you can reinstall it, run some water through the unit, injecting your nutrient source, use your EC meter, and check the concentration of the parts per million of your nutrient. Other mix right units may not have this adjustment sleeve collar, but they will all twist. This just has a locking feature. Sometimes people get a little excited and they say, I want to see the ratio and not the percentage. So they go ahead and they mount it up onto the wall. 
and they plummet all together. And unfortunately, they didn't pay attention to the arrow. You're gonna to say to yourself, how do I resolve this? This lower cap nut can be loosened to the point where it's gonna be off. And you're gonna remove this. It takes a little bit of strength because there's O-rings that are lubricated in there and it's a very tight seal. So when you go to reinstall it, there are four recesses on the internal and there's four tabs on the chemical cylinder. You can review and see if it shows their percentage or ratio, and then make your decision as to which you would like to see. I'm gonna go ahead and use the percentage. From this viewpoint, I need to clock this or turn it a quarter of a turn so that I can now see the percentage and it's fully seated. Once that's done, go ahead and retighten the lower cap nut. A little firm pressure, nothing extreme. They are O-ring gasketed. With the O-ring gasket, you don't need to put a lot of strength to it. The O-ring gasket will be your seal, but make sure that you have it snug. I like to go in with just a little lighter than what the normal application is, because you can always add more. And what you do is once you have it installed, you'll get your pH meter to check your water source, and you'll also get your EC meter for electroconductivity. And your fertilizer bag typically will tell you what your parts per million, so you'll know what that fertilizer concentration rate should be. If I need more induction of a nutrient, or I want to add two nutrients into the same water line, how do I do it with the mix right? The mix right will inject one nutrient source at a time. However, it is possible and it is common to install two mix rights in series with bypasses off of your main line. How that's accomplished is, is off of your main line, you'll make a T, you'll come in 90 over. Typically, you'd like to have a ball valve and a union and a union and a ball valve, and then put it back into your main line. So if you want to inject your straight nitrogen source, you use one mix right. On your second mix right, if you want to inject your trace elements, and because trace elements are just that, trace, you'll need lesser amount. You want to make sure that you scale your mix right model and series to a unit that's going to pull the adequate amounts for you. The maintenance schedule for a mix right, it depends upon use, and that's going to be kind of a loaded question, right? How many days of operation are you having, and what is your product that you're pulling up and injecting into your water stream? I would tell you to do some preventative maintenance probably once a year. If you notice any differences in the injection rate, there's a couple things that we'll go through with maintenance aspects, but unless you see something, I would say probably on a yearly schedule. Yeah. And for those people who are just using it on a smaller garden application, as long as you're bringing it in out of the winter weather so it doesn't freeze, you can probably get away with a year or two before you do any serious repairs inside. Cleaning is always good. The internals of the machine are actually gasketed and they have the lubrication silicone. If you're gonna pull into it and do any kind of work at all, just go ahead and take a minute, get a towel, whatever, clean it all off, make sure there's no debris sediment inside of there. And then of course, apply your lubrication silicone on all the seals and gaskets that you're seeing. It's a very easy machine to, to do maintenance on. There's some other versions in the marketplace that require a lot more tools. And one of the features that we like to express about the mix right is that as long as you have one of the rubber strap wrenches and you can break it apart, you don't need the big tools or anything right. like that. As long as you can ball valve it off and turn off your water source, you can do all, almost all the rebuild while it's still in the plumbing. If you're gonna have to really get involved, it may be best to go ahead and release the unions right, and pull right. it off the wall, put it on the workbench, but it can be done in the field. So just a little bit ago, we spoke about the lip seal kits for maintenance, and we spoke about the chemical piston rod and the O-ring. These three come in the kit that's included in the box. Should your mix right not be pulling nutrient, this is one item to look at. These seals have silicone on them, so you'll feel them, and they should always be load it with silicone. It is a rubber gasketed operation, so just make sure that there's no scarring. The inside cap of your mix right, once you take it off, go ahead and do a visual examination, make sure there's no scoring or scarring of sand or debris that's gotten in there that's gonna mess with the operation of the seals. This is the engine or piston for the mix right unit. The older models, you may have a white one. The same lip seal kit that Drip Depot is gonna get for you will accommodate either the white or the yellow unit. These lip seal kits do need to be replaced. I would recommend to do them on an annual basis in the off season. One pointer that I can give to you is that when you're removing these, go ahead and just use a pair of pliers or needle nose pliers. It makes it a lot easier to pull them off. When you have the new lip seals, I like to set them in some hot water, something around the temperature of coffee. Let them sit there for about five minutes. It makes everything a whole lot more pliable. This upper seal is a little bit of a sharp edge, even though it's rubber. So let them soak in some hot water is a good thing. The lower portion of this is the chemical pickup rod. And of course, we have the O-ring down here. I always just use one of those real small screwdrivers. You can pry it off and then you slide the next new one on. That is included in the kit. Should you need to remove the chemical pickup rod, when you twist it, it's only a quarter of a turn. 
everyone knows that sound of breaking plastic. When you do it, and it's just a quarter turn, right or left, you automatically think you broke it. You haven't. It's just how the plastic sounds. So on the chemical pickup rod, when you're gonna do a reinstall, there's a barb on the top of it. There's a hole inside of the engine where this chemical pickup rod goes to be inserted. Line those up. And again, there was that sound. It's not broken. Still works, still good. I'm using my hands. If you don't have a lot of hand strength, you can use a light grip of a pair of pliers, but try to get it done with your hands. Any kind of scratching or marring you get on here, if you can stay away from that, just use your hand strength. You're gonna to wanna to take off the uptake hose off your barb. Make sure your water's off, otherwise your shoes and boots are gonna get real wet. All we need to do is to remove the cap nut and pull straight down. This is your check valve. So on your check valve, this is a two-piece check valve, the barb assembly and the top portion. And it does need to have a little bit of maintenance done to it. On the top portion, there's an O-ring there. It's made of rubber and a lubrication of silicone. Everything's pretty much a quarter turn on the mix right to disassemble them. So that's what's gonna occur for these to be disassembled. Once it's open, you'll make sure that there's no debris or scarring on the lower portion of your check valve. And then here's one of the rubber seals that's inside of it. If you have an old toothbrush or some type of brushing material, you can just make sure this is nice and clean. A little soap and water. Once you have it clean and re-lubricate it, you will reinstall it. One thing to do when you're reinstalling the check valve, if you look at the hands that are like this, on the check valve, there's two portions that interlock. When you reinstall, slide it together, you'll twist it that quarter turn, and you should hear a snap. When that happens, those are interlocked like such. Apply your silicone grease again to the top portion in case you wiped it off on your hands. You reinstall it, put your cap nut back on, just finger tight secure. You'll reattach your uptake hose that is in your bucket of nutrients. There's so many variants of fertilizers that are on the market. One of the better products to use, in my opinion, is anything that has a consistency of water, the clarity of water, if that's possible. There's a lot of folks that have an indoor grow facilities that are using what's referred to as a flake. Think of your cornflakes, just in a right. much smaller scale. And they put that with water and they stir it up into a solution and it works fine. However, if your mix right, or if your system is gonna be sitting idle for a while, that fertilizer, which is similar to a salt, will right. dry out and flake back together where someone has to look at it for maintenance aspect. It's yeah. not gonna damage the machine by any chance, but it's something that you need to be aware of. There's a lot of growers that are actually using a liquefied fish material. It's a little clunky or a little chunky. <laughs> um, and on the bottom of the mix right, there's a tube um, that has a filter screen. And that filter screen just needs to be cleaned off to make sure that it's getting adequate pull. If your region experiences winter weather conditions, I advise you to go ahead and Remove the mix right from the system when you winterize, when you blow out the irrigation, so that no freezing occurs internally. If you can take it into a barn or take it into the garage and store it where it's not gonna freeze, be best suited to do so. What are the operating temperatures that the mix right can work under? Well, the temperature scale that the mix right can be run at is a high of 104 degrees Fahrenheit or a low of 40 degrees Fahrenheit. On your mix right, if you have a test port just shortly downstream and your mix right has been in the sun, it's okay to be in the sun, but just know at that test port a few feet down, the initial water that comes out is gonna be very, very warm, potentially scalding, so just be cautious. If your mix right's not working properly, there's a few tips that I can give you. If your mix right is operating and you hear the clicking of the piston operation, however, you're not drawing up nutrient, one quick thing that you can do is gently remove your rubber hose that goes into your nutrient. Put your fingertip or the palm of your hand onto the bottom of the barb fitting, and you should feel a very light suction, a little pull as this is flowing, and you'll wanna hear the clicking. So each time you hear the cycle, you should get a little kiss on the palm of your hand or on the fingertip. If you're not getting that slight suction kiss, turn off your water supply. You can remove this lower cap nut. You can pull out your check valve. You can go ahead and do, just do a quick PM maintenance on it by taking it apart, cleaning it, re-lubricating it with some silicone product, reinstalling it, turn back on your water source, let water flow through, and see if you feel a little suction kiss on the palm of your hand or on the finger. It's also a good idea if you're in a position where you can't stop your fertigation, go ahead and order one from Drip Depot. Just email the customer service team and tell them the unit, they'll get you one out. It's always easy and good to have one on the shelf, just in case. The information that the folks at Drip Depot are gonna need to know, on these units, you'll see a number here on the side. This is the model and series information that they will need to, in order to get you the proper parts. So go ahead and just get an extra check valve to have it on the shelf. Agriculture, as we all know, doesn't stop.
If you have a mix right unit and you're seeing water flow backwards down your intake tube into your batch of nutrient, there's one or two problems that are occurring. Somewhere, one of the fittings is loose and you're getting air back into your system or your check valve has some kind of debris in it which is allowing the water to go backwards and your check valve is not operating properly. Those are two things you should look for if you have water going backwards into your nutrient tank. Make sure your check valve is functioning properly, that it's good and clean, and make sure that all of your mix right connections have been tightened if your nutrient product has run out and you're sucking air. If it's not priming, go ahead and pull this U-pin, then you can adjust your collar, your sleeve up, reinstall the pin, Go ahead and run your water through your system till it draws suction and prime. Then take out the pin, move your collar adjustment sleeve back to where you need it, and you should be good to go. And there you have it. Everything you need to know to install, maintain, and troubleshoot your own mix right unit. If you have any questions or need replacement parts or just help with sizing, please don't hesitate to contact us. We'd be more than happy to help. And a big thank you to Dave from DEMA for coming down and sharing all this information with us.